guys, I'm back. <laughs> After a small accident that you saw, I'm all good. It did hurt a little bit, and uh, it was unexpected. That's why it was more frightening than uh, painful. Luckily, thank God, this is not prone to much eye damage. It's more deadly if you swallow it. So it says, for eye contact, wash thoroughly with water. So I didn't even need to call poison control, which is very good. I'm very happy that this happened. Um, that it didn't get worse, right? My eye, my eye was irritated for a little while, but that once again plays into a role of safety. You must have safety for even such unexpected events. The safety is number one priority. Right, and now goggles <laughs> all the way. So I'm done with this chainsaw. All right, guys, this is a carburetor. It looks fairly clean, looks a lot in better conditions than I saw, found it in. Right, I'm gonna uh, try and spray it carefully, look the other way. Um, in fact, I'll put on some gl uh, gloves <laughs> to prevent any skin contact either. So I just did a project for my dad. He needed me to flatten out a uh, drill bit so he can use it to mix things. What happened, the drill bit broke in half. As you can see right here, this is the drill bit. It was a pretty thick one. I tried flattening out the the circular part later. Uh, however, I feel like there's not enough metal and it's getting pretty thin. So to pr I don't want it to break again. So instead, I'll just leave it like this and uh, just gotta mix it for a little longer. Mixing uh, different things like mixtures of uh, I don't know I don't I don't know grout for example. Okay, I'm gonna uh, look for. that I'm gonna clean the inside of it too you open the shaft there you go okay that's a very strong chemical scent to it okay what other holes I'm looking for like holes that go inside to, to the components not holes like the screw holes right uh, I think that's it so now after the carburetor is in much better conditions so I'll just spray it up right here and I will leave it be for now oh, I found another hole going into the component area all right also, talked about some uh, harmful vapor. I can actually smell it. I mean, it's probably harmful in big quantities, not small ones. Plus I have a lot of ventilation. I have a window open right now. I have my garage door open, I have the window open. So a lot of ventilation, so the inhalation poisoning shouldn't be an issue. I've got my dad help I helped my dad install a tools rack, as you saw in the beginning of the video. And uh, I'm gonna inspect the carburetor, the carburetor right now. Inspect it for any holes that I might have missed. Doesn't seem like I missed anything. I'm pretty sure I sprayed into every hole I saw. All right, inside the shafts. They should be all clean. All right. So since the carburetor is fixed, right? Well, we assume it's fixed. Next, I went to Home Depot and I couldn't find any filters for the fuel because my dad bought this online. So instead we'll order it, but for now we'll put it back together and we'll see how it works. All right guys, so here we are. Clean the working area. Close up this very chemically strong cleaner okay keep them to the sides right here so now clean this area off there you go look at empire umpire in baseball do this so now this looks very dirty to me this whole area so I will get this all cleaned up and I'll rinse it with water and then I can see that the fuel, the fuel pipe is still good. 
food pipe is still good. I can see that right here looks pretty dirty too. So I'll probably degrease all of this and then wash it out with water. Um, although I might instead just wet a napkin and wipe it down because I don't. I'm not sure if washing out with, with water would be the best idea. Um, so yeah, let's do that. A water bucket right here. So first thing I'll do, I'll spray this degreaser. I'll grab. Just screwdriver, just work around the depth in depth areas full of wood, um, scraps from chainsawing, pull them all out. You know what's funny, guys, actually? I was recording since I was recording uh, the, the accident when it happened. I showed it to I showed it to my dad and uh, he started laughing. He found it very very funny. <laughs> well, it's probably because no, I, I can't keep showing the video. Uh, he thought I was fine. He thought I, I, I was not hurt. But it was a very very funny moment. Later on, have this these shafts dirty for some reason. I'm not quite sure what they do. Okay, all that's dirt. Go to the floor. Okay, wet my rag. Just work around the greasy areas. Okay guys, so you can see it looks a lot more shinier, a lot cleaner now. Alright, we'll get all this dirt off the working table. Keep the working space clean. The floor will be swept later. Alright. So, now, I'm going to put all the things back together. Um, right. Is the fuel being held up? Quickly shift this. There you go, like that. I believe this was in this position. Carburetor was in this position, okay. And the fuel line was going. Oh boy. Hmm, I don't recall. Let me watch back the video and see where the fuel line was. Alright guys, so I figured it out. It's this one right here. That's this is the line for the fuel that I pulled out. This is a different line. We'll plug it in right now. Alright, I'm gonna unclamp it. Hopefully it won't shoot. Alright, yep, it's all nice and held up. Okay. Now, the other fuel line that I found, which I believe is on this side, this small one. If you can't see it, yeah, this one right here. Um, let me just brush off this area real quick before I put anything on it. Okay, I'm hooking back the car carburetor, car carburetor back on. Okay, plugging in the fuel line. I think it's the continuation of the one we just unplugged. Pushing it in well. All right, we have that done. We have the trigger, the trigger inside. It's like a hook, I gotta hook it in there. All right, trigger's in. Pulls well. All right, we have uh, this line right here. Looks like the power. Um, probably goes. Just put this back on because this was on before I took anything off. All right, okay, like that. Nice and tidy. 
And then it had a fixture, a, a screw. It also had this piece. These three pieces were on there. Now, the issue is that I don't remember where this piece was. Talk to my dad, because he uh, initially took this apart, right? I'm just putting back the rest. So now, this piece goes here, as I figured out with my dad. He said he unscrewed a screw here. Oh, don't fall in there, please. And this would go somewhere. Okay. There's a spring here. Pull it down, maybe. Get my screwdriver. on top here so I would need to push it down there we go nice fit we'll screw this little screw back in it's a flat head just like our screwdriver right here that's in there okay we'll put in the hexagonal socket screw or bolt back to hold the carburetor so guys for a better view I was doing just this just now this one bolt to hold it that was holding it down I was putting in this red and blue pieces, right? It had a screw right here, my dad unscrewed it. There's a spring, it's spring loaded. There's a spring uh, right here, it's a spring. It's uh, in a groove made for it. So to pull it back, to put the red thing in. So that's what I did. See, spring right here, it's a zigzag spring. Okay, now we're putting in the two nuts on the carburetor. Hopefully I'll stay in place now. Okay, next was we have Two power supply cables. Um, where do they go? I have it opens and closes now pretty well. Why is that one open? I guess that's to be open. I think it's a choke actually. Yep, it's a choke. This closes the choke. Yeah, the choke is open all the time. Okay. This. Hmm. Might go here. Huh. I wonder where. This power. Um, this white cover covers, I guess I can put it on right now, right here, make sure it's all nice and clean.
Okay, I'm gonna keep looking for the. Hmm. Maybe here. Aha! Found found the negative where the negative goes. The positive charge probably hooks up right here to the spring. The spring is the connection. I assume. Right? And okay, yep. Let me just double check that spring would actually touch it. Yep, spring would actually touch it. Okay, this is where the power goes. The red one is the one to power, it's the starter. Now we have the final cover. That'll be the end of it. Okay, so power cable, the positive charged one, push it in real quick, okay, there you go, I can probably shift it more to the left side, this thing is resisting for some reason, uh, maybe it's, hold up one second, I might have to put this positive one, in reverse, I mean the other side. So the lead of the wire will go to the other side, so it wouldn't interfere with it with a uh, with the casing. Okay, it's in. Okay, the wires look nice and tight in there. Case came off. There you go, nice and secure. Nice. There we are. Now it's we have a screw here and a well screw or bolt, whatever you want to call it, and one right here. Also one up top here. They're the hexagonal ones. Ah, it's both. It's a it's a flat head and a. Hexagonal socket. Okay. Our neighbor's dogs are on the balcony. Okay, that's that. <clears throat> so the insides were mostly inspected. Now we'll work on the chain. Now, the chain itself is right here this is our chain it's very lubricated so I'm gonna knock off the wood scraps shavings off the lubrication prevent any clogging of dirt oh wow the lubricant or the grease or the oil, whatever you want to call it, and the wood shavings have formed a nice, like a, like Play-Doh, right in the most um, hard to get spots. So I'm just gonna remove all this long-lasted Play-Doh, wood shaving Play-Doh. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and spray it with our de degreaser. Put it on our surface cover. Now with the cover of the chainsaw track being degreased, put this to the floor. I'm gonna put in the water. Brush it off with a brush. All right, guys. So I put it back together. My dad says that I need to readjust the red and blue, the red and blue uh, triggers. 
Man, this, this oil, this fuel tank cap won't open. So, I'll go back inside and see what I can do there. All right, let's try one more time. So, test run, my test run, okay. Push in the prime six times, okay. Make sure the brakes are off. All right, something, something, uh, open the choke. So guys, as you saw, we have no issue starting the chainsaw anymore, but issues for it to run. I assume it's uh, it was the carburetor that we uh, cleaned out, right? It, it cost me some pain and, and some shock, but other than that, you know, it's worth it because it's no permanent damage. Uh, so once you readjust these two, I'll open it up again and uh, see what's wrong with there. And then we'll get back to testing the chainsaw. Alright guys, so this is the main issue of the chainsaw, this mechanism right here. How it's supposed to work is you pull the choke, full choke, it clicks. However, this has to go up higher in order for the electrode, this wire, this copper part, to make contact with the spring, the black spring right there, which you see right here. For some reason it doesn't go all the way up, it goes it should go a lot higher than that. It stays at this point, it doesn't go any higher. Otherwise, everything else works perfectly. The trigger mechanism works, it clicks as it's supposed to, the carburetor works, it reacts to all the pistons and all the clicks, it's just this red starter. So I'll figure out the issue and get back to you.